Welcome back to another episode of Christian Singles today, beloved. I'm so glad that you're here to join me in another conversation to discover the joys, the triumphs, the challenges, the struggles of what it means to be a Christian single person in today's society. You're here with your host, Reverend Simone Lee, your Christian relationship coach. And for the last few episodes, we've been debunking a lot of the myths about how it sucks to be single. And so I think I've hyped a lot about singleness is also a time of fruitfulness and triumph and that there's so much blessing to be explored and discovered during this season. And I just don't want to leave the impression in any way to imply that marriage is bad and now we should all just stay forever single. And that is why I just want to talk about the flip side of it, of how it's still God's intent for marriage and that it's always been God's intent for a man and woman to be joined in holy matrimony and how the invitation to partake in that is part of something so much deeper in the divine union of Jesus Christ than some of us have ever even scratched our heads pondering about before. So before we hop on into that, just really encourage you to be comfortable and grab your beverage of choice so that you can relax and engage and ponder as we have our little coffee chat together today. And if you haven't already, I really want to invite you to be a part of this community and remember to subscribe or follow this podcast so that you'll be notified when we have a new episode released every Tuesday morning. As we had discussed in one of our earlier episodes that marriage has historically been a social construct and economical construct where it was often used to protect the resources and the privileges and the power and rights of families and also for less well-off families also to make sure that women and children are provided for. But as society has changed and there's more opportunities available for both genders, now I'm not delusional in any way to think that the opportunities are equal in any way for both genders, but there are more opportunities for both genders to gain employment and to be able to self-sustain in one way or another. So a lot of things whether it's resources or services that we once depended on for the family unit to provide for, we can now outsource to service providers and we can also self-sustain ourselves through gainful employment. So what that has done is that marriage is no longer seen as the inevitable thing and as a matter of fact, sometimes may even be seen as an inconvenience. As some people may feel that it robs them of the liberty of open relationships or feeling too tied down or the legal aspects that are involved in marriage. But looking from the Christian perspective, even as a Christian single, sometimes if we have found such fulfillment in our season of singleness, we have found triumph and fruitfulness and been enjoying this season of singleness as a time with God, then marriage can also still feel like it's a bad thing because it may drain your time and resources and energy and strength in ways that you're not used to anymore. I mean, for example, One thing I often say when talking to my girlfriends is that by this life stage of being 40 and single for the last 10 years, I've pretty much learned to take care of life on my own. So unless I find someone that is actually going to add value, and I mean add actual extra value into my life, I really don't see the benefit of allowing a relationship to drain my resources, time, and strength, and actually especially take up space that I'm so used to allowing God to take up. And I guess that's why this week I felt compelled to share my heart on this subject matter with you guys that despite how comfortable we may be and how fruitful our season of singlehood may be already, that it's still God's intent to bless us with marriage. It's always been since the beginning of time and it always will until the end of time. I mean, if you look at the Bible, starting with Genesis, when God created Adam, he 
said that it was not good for man to be alone, and that he created companionship for Adam. And all of the animals in this world could not satisfy that deep need for companionship, for union. And even God himself was not enough to satisfy Adam. Because a lot of times, what、well, we kind of get into the mindset of is like, well, you know, God should be enough for me. Yeah, God desires for us to be satisfied in Him. But if it was always supposed to be God should be enough for me, then why did God say that it is not good for man to be alone, and that he needs to create a companion and create Eve out of the ribs of Adam to bring to him? Have we ever wondered the fact that just as the Trinity finds such completeness and union in that companionship of having someone that is the same? That is created to be together. He desires for us to likewise have that kind of companionship, and that was something in the beginning of time that God had gifted humanity with that marriage, that union, that holy matrimony of one man and one woman to be joined as one flesh and uncleave with their parents, so that they may embark on a journey of a life together, of a discovery together, and one that is not apart from walking with God, but that in the Garden of Eden. That before the serpent came along, that every day and the breeze of the evening, that they will walk together with God, and that is what the beauty of a marriage union is: that we will walk together with God, and as we walk closer and closer towards God together, that we would, as man and wife, be able to walk closer and closer to one another, and as the man and wife walk closer to one another, we would understand more about the deepness of God towards us. Likewise, in Revelation. The church is called the bride of Christ. What an astonishing imagery that we are called to be the bride of Christ. That marriage itself speaks to the heart of how God desires to pull us close to Him. How we are designed to be in relationship with Him. As a man and woman join in holy matrimony and discover to a deeper revelation each and every single day what it means to be bride and groom, we are discovering together also how to be that bride of Christ, to be that body of Christ. And that revelation sometimes maybe can only be discovered as we walk these metaphors out in our own lives. And that is why. I'm hesitant when people talk about the gift of singleness. I would always encourage them to really, really have a deeper conversation with God to discover: Is it really, really, indeed a gift of singleness, as Paul has it? One where he is not only triumphant and fruitful, but one where he embraces it with gladness, with joy. One where he is not lacking in anything. And one where he understands, despite not having a physical union of his own, but he understands how the union reflects that of the church and Jesus. Because if you look at the Bible, single Paul, Mr. Single Paul, is the guy that wrote the most about marriage in the Bible in the New Testament, right? So his singleness did not deter him away from the revelation of understanding holy matrimony and how that is reflected. And is a glorious image of how we are to relate to Jesus Christ, and how He desires to pull us into relationship with Him. That is—I I feel like I'm just even scratching the surface of the gift of singleness. A lot of times, the people that I've worked with that tells me that they have the gift of singleness, indeed, what they have is despair and hopelessness and tiredness from hoping, from wanting, and it just seems easier to give up and kind of almost inadvertently. Blaming God for the marital status, but the invitation here today, beloved, is to awaken your desire for marriage, the desire that God has given you for marriage. And when He wakes it, it means that it's something that He wants to give to you. And that holy disgruntle that you've been dealing with is because it's a call to partnering with Him in prayer, to coming to your Papa, to sitting on the laps of the One who loves you. I mean, if as a society we can come to a mall on Christmas holiday season and sit on the lap of a stranger dressed in a red suit, pretending to be Santa Claus, and tell him, you know, what we want for Christmas, why is it so hard to believe that we can come in the presence of our Father 
Holy Father in heaven, the one that created us and thought of us before the beginning of time, and just sit on his lap and tell him the desires of our hearts and trust that he wants to give us the desires of our hearts, the pains of our hearts, that they hurt him more than they hurt us. And he's just waiting for us to partner with him and tell him and open our arms to receiving all of that goodness from him. But all of that requires that honest conversation with him so that we can allow him to guide and lead us and surrender and saying like, you know what? I've tried it every way on my own, God. I've tried it. I tried to fight for these blessings on my own. And all I got was hurt and despair and feeling unlovable, undesirable, unworthy. Lord, help me to fix my eyes on you and allow you to lead, allow you to show me how you want to bless me. I promise you, I promise you that when we allow him to be the one in charge, he brings us to a glorious place that is above and beyond anything that we can ever imagine. That is the blessing I desire for you, beloved. If today's episode has stirred in you some questions and pondering, and you're wanting someone to walk with you and exploring these conversations with God, I want to give you the invitation to reach out to me so that I may offer you a free session where we can have some of these deeper conversations together. As I've shared before, I've experienced as a counselor, pastor, inner healer, spiritual director, relationship coach, and it would be my absolute privilege to be able to journey with you, helping you to explore the invitations that Jesus is extending to you during this precious time of your life and also to discover and be in anticipation for all the gifts that he is desiring to pour into your life and that is to come so anyways if you're interested in taking up on that offer be sure to just check out the description below for my contact information remember beloved i am praying for you and before we meet again just wanted to remind you that you are loved you are accepted and you belong I'm looking forward for us chatting together again next Tuesday. Have a great and wonderful week.